stoic, calm, fearless, steel. These are the words that come to mind as we are introduced to the Dark Knight, a silent protector who watches over the city he would selflessly die for. Sunshine. The camera opens on a spider slowly descending on his web. Carefully we are taken over Peter Parker's room. It's a mess full of clothes, failed savings and mementos from his adventures with Spider-Man. His makeshift police scan awaits him. He's excited. This is the morning Peter Parker would take down Wilson Fisk aka the Kingpin. As a pass due bill is slid under his door he is immediately hit with the choice. Pay his rent or take down one of his biggest foes. While I do believe Spider-Man PS4 is better, both these games are excellent at diving into the character and immediately telling us who they are. Without further ado, here are my, keyword my, top three reasons Marvel Spider-Man PS4 is better than the Arkham series. Number one. Spider-Man PS4 is a near perfect Spider-Man story. Peter Parker is 23 years old, no high school or origin story, Chronologically, he's been Spider-Man for 8 years since 2010. He's a veteran that's seen it all. Almost. I'm not going to tell it word for word, but here are the key points I like the most and will expand upon. Norman Osborn is the mayor. Now pause. I want all my Hollywood execs, producers, directors, writers, so on and so forth to listen. Osborn being the mayor is a perfect way to modernize the character. He's still rich. He's still the head of Oscorp. He's still everything that makes Norman Norman. Nobody told the staff not to read the comic books because it would be completely different. Nobody took a godlike being and turned it into a black hole. It works. I'm not going to get triggered. Moving on. The story takes you through Peter Parker's ups and downs. Up as high as taking down Wilson Fisk in a single morning and as low as Aunt May dying. Yes, Aunt May dies. You should all know this. Well, I'm not happy an old woman died. Okay, I am. Here's what I mean. Aunt May has been a staple in the Spider-Man mythos for decades now. After good old Uncle Ben died, they were all each other had. But every good thing must come to an end. Peter's a man now. He's probably going to marry Mary Jane in a couple of years. He has to move on and be able to build a life as a man should. Mommy can't live forever. Now, while Peter retains that good old Parker guilt, he's not so stupidly written that he would tell God to fuck off when he says Aunt May has to die. Yes, that really happened. Don't know the exact issue? Go look it up on Reddit or something. There are other great parts of the story as well, such as Mary Jane and Peter being broken up due to the fact that she doesn't want to be a damsel in distress. She's strong and independent and wants to show the world she's just not some supporting character. Once again, perfect way to modernize the character even though she was never weak or anything. But the shining gem of the story is Otto Octavius. Not that one even though he's still cool. Otto is Peter's friend, partner, and father figure all rolled into one. He recognizes Peter's genius and takes him under his wing at the optimistic but failing Octavius Industries. The whole idea of their project is to create cybernetic prosthetics for people who have lost limbs like vets or the disfigured. It all eventually leads to this, but again, perfect way to modernize the character. Eventually we find out Otto has a disease, which is basically ALS, but they do not say it explicitly. That's why he is so ready to find a way for machine and man to truly become one. Otto has to become a monster because there's no bullshit loophole where Dr. Octopus takes over then Otto likes some Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde situation and even then Mr. I acts like a light-hearted anti-hero because the writers are pussies. <sighs> Number two. The book bags. Whoever had this idea was a genius. Seriously, give him a raise. To drop us into an established universe and waste no time on origin stories or unnecessary flashbacks is amazing. You find these book bags and get these little insights into Peter's personal and spider life. You're not forced to figure out elaborate puzzles that are tedious and abundant all while some little turd is talking shit in the background. Stunned? <laughs> you didn't expect this, did you? That is because you are no match for me, Edward Nigma, the Riddler, and your intellectual superior. You genuinely want to find more of these bags of wonder because it means adding another piece to the puzzle. Like when we find a bag with a Daily Bugle newspaper blaming Spider-Man for murder and realizing that's why he doesn't work for the Bugle anymore. This article blaming Spider-Man for electro-killing cops was the last straw. I had to quit taking pictures that helped Jameson print lies about me. Genius. Number three. The use of its cast. Where the Arkham series always failed is using its Robins and Batgirls and Nightwing. 
Sure, they tried in Arkham Knight with Tim, and we even got those horribly placed Catwoman missions in City, but Spider-Man does a wonderful job of using Mary Jane and Miles Morales. Now, I will admit Mary Jane's missions can be slow and sometimes unnecessary. She shines the most when the missions directly affect the story, or better yet, give a new gameplay mechanic, such as when you're directing Spider-Man in the Grand Central setting, or when we are snooping around Norman's penthouse and we find out that Harry Osborn, who has supposedly been on a trip in Europe, has actually contracted the same genetic disease his mother had and the treatment could possibly lead to him being Venom. The only word? Awesome. Arkham had a plethora of characters to pull from. Take Two-Face for instance. Two-Face is the definition of the word dichotomy. Harvey Dent, the White Knight of Gotham, and Two-Face, criminal scum. There were a number of ways to dive deeper into his character, and yet in both games he's criminally underutilized, especially in Arkham, and he's no more than a petty bank robber in Arkham Knight. In conclusion, Arkham was a great series, but I think part of his greatness was the shock factor of it, and how immersive it was, but that shock factor is just not enough to hold it up to Spider-Man PS4.